Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another... Oh, wow. ...moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Step right up, step right up, and try my Taurus Toss Challenge. Can you knock over this entire stack of styrofoam cups using nothing more than a Taurus? Is a Taurus a ball or something? I don't see any balls. No, we don't use balls around here. Too big a chance we could break something. A Taurus is more like a ring. A ring? I don't see any rings either. Well, that's because you haven't made them yet. Make them? Sure, out of air. Air? How can air knock down cups? Well, air is matter. Nitrogen, carbon dioxide, oxygen, bunch of other gases. And matter can affect other types of matter. Like wind blowing through a tree moves leaves, and wind is nothing more than moving air. Here, let me show you. So in this one, the fan below is creating a whole vortex of air that can move things like these coffee filters around. So in this case, what we have is we have air inside the tire, which is gonna travel up the tube into the pipe. So when you stomp down, it launches the rocket. And in this exhibit, you put a ping pong ball in that hole and the air pushes it up that tube. So as you can see, air can definitely move things. In this case, all we need is a way to generate our ring of air. And how do we do that? So glad you asked. Here's what you need to do. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. You'll need a bungee cord, a plastic shower liner, scissors, and a five gallon bucket, all of which you can get at your local hardware store. This is one of those times you're gonna need your responsible adult to help you. You need to cut about a two inch hole in the bottom center of your bucket. Now I'm gonna use a Dremel tool to do this, but a utility knife will work just as well. Due to the danger of using these tools, this is definitely a job for an adult taking all proper safety precautions. The hole doesn't need to be perfectly round or exactly two to two and a half inches, but should preferably be roundish and under three inches. When done, the kids can take back over. Next, cut a large square piece of plastic, about four inches larger on each side than the diameter of the top of the bucket. Our bucket is about 12 inches in diameter, so our square will be 16 inches on each side. The next step takes two people. One should center the shower curtain liner up on top of the bucket and then hold it tight. The second should wrap the bungee cord around the top of the bucket to hold the liner in place. You may need a little adult help. All right. So before you shoot your cannon, first just kind of check to make sure your shower curtain is on nice and tight. Then just aim your cannon in the direction you want your torus to go and give it a little tap. Now, since you can't see the air moving, it may take a little practice to aim it right. Here we go, do it one more time. There you go. Wait, so if you can't see it, how do you know it's a ring? Well, there is a way to see it. I've made this larger version of a Taurus cannon using a trash can instead of a five gallon bucket. Using a fog machine, I'm going to add some smoke inside so we can see how the air moves when it exits. So when I tap the shower curtain, air is pushed out the hole. Because the hole is small, the pressure behind the air increases, giving it more force as it exits the Taurus cannon. As the air exits the cannon, the air moving around the edges of the hole slows down due to friction, creating the torus or ring that you see. So the blast of air from the torus can exert enough force to knock over some things like styrofoam cups. How good a sharpshooter can you become? This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play. <laughs>